one of the coolest things, I think, okay, here I am just painting a texture at a normal resolution. We've used textures at about uh, 256 forever before we're using 64, but check this out. I can actually scale the texture and scale the resolution of the texture. That's incredible. So I can make one texture that could replace the work that I have to do with three or four textures. So I'm doing one texture uh, that can do all that work and now I'm just painting in a little bit of rock or a little bit of grass. It just adds more creativity to the game. I think that's amazing. This is our editor, by the way, that we use to create WoW. So that's scalable textures. Another really cool thing you'll see in a second is something called height-based texturing, but it lets me paint, for example, snow inside the rocks of another texture, inside the cracks of another texture, rather. If I wanted to do this before, even just a few months ago, I would have had to create a texture with snow in the cracks, create a texture without snow, or create one you, you, you know, a combination of rocks. I would have had to do that with three or four textures. Now I can basically take a rock texture and a snow texture and combine them any way I want to. This was impossible to do just a few months ago. It is incredible. Thanks, Marco. Very new tech, really exciting. Just helps us make the world better. So check this out, this next scene. I'm gonna be painting some rock textures on the ground and I'm gonna lightly paint, we have pressure sensitive tablets, so I can lightly paint a little bit of lava between the cracks of another texture. So the harder I push, the more that lava comes through. Isn't that awesome? I would have had to make all those separate textures if I wanted to do that last year. So I'm gonna add a little bit of vertex shading, and darken it a little bit, and pop a little red vertex on top of that, just to bring it out. Boom, done. Really cool. So, all right, hold off here. Thank you very much, but all these new tech, tech uh, examples have just made us make the world uh, better and easier and uh, more fun to make. Right, Marco? Thank you, Gary. On the engine team, we're constantly thinking of ways we can improve the look of WoW and just generally make it easier to create content. For this expansion, we came up with a technique that allows objects to pick up the terrain texture in their vicinity. This way, we can like embed caves into the terrain, or do common things like put the terrain on the back of a gigantic turtle. We now also support secondary animation uh, via dynamics. Hopefully we'll be able to bring those chains that Mark was mentioning to life. Um, we're starting with the Pandaren belt. However, the largest enhancement in this version of the engine is in the lighting. Shadows in WoW traditionally only darken the object rather than obscuring the light source. This resulted in a flat look, even for objects that have a lot of geometric detail. By changing how we calculate the lighting and how we apply it to the scene, we can improve this dramatically. This effect is achieved by looking at the depth information in the scene and then trying to figure out how a location is obscured by its neighbors and then combining that with the lighting. So this is just that mask getting applied here and then a few before after shots. With these changes, we feel that we can make the environments look better than ever before in WoW. And we hope to give you many exciting vistas in your journey through Pandaria. Thanks, Marco. Awesome work. Good job. Marco did an incredible job. And I have to say, after we rehearsed, we were having lunch, 
had a few drinks in him, and he says, Gary, don't get excited about the scalable textures. <laughs> but how could I not? It's incredible. For me as an artist, he's just given us more tools to make this expansion the very best one that we've ever done. Absolutely. So thank you, Marco, and the thank you, Gary, and everyone else. Thank you, guys. So now that we've created a beautiful environment for you to explore, uh, we're going to move on to some real excitement from the only girl on the team, Wendy, who has... On the panel. On, yes, sorry. And uh, uh, her team is responsible for all of the buildings and the incredible dungeons that you see in the game. Thanks, Gary, for that introduction. <laughs> also, you're not the only girl on the team. Yeah, let's clarify uh, that. Okay. The only <laughs> Eric used to be a girl. girl on the stage. Oh. <laughs> Stay on time. I'm here. getting that one in early because I know what's coming up. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Way to out him at BlizzCon, man. Sorry, Eric. Erica. <laughs> and play. There we go. So hi, everyone. My name is Wendy Vetter, uh, apparently the only girl on the panel. Uh, the, and I'm the dungeon arc lead for the World of Warcraft team. So while Gary's team has been busy coming up with some amazing looking environments for this expansion, uh, it's the dungeon team's responsibility to come up with the architectural style and the culture kit for the races, um, like the buildings and of course the dungeons uh, that you all play in the game. Um, so for the Pandaren, we had a smattering of information, but not a lot to go on, like Mark was mentioning. So just to get the ball rolling, we just kind of started to come up with some questions to uh, figure out who the Pandaren are. There we go. So where do the Pandaren come from? Uh, what's their background? What's their personality traits? Are they fat, thin, <laughs> muscular? Uh, what do they eat? I know this sounds like a strange question, but there was some debate whether or not they were going to be uh, veggie eaters or meat eaters, and the meat eaters won, so whatever that means. Um, what kind of skills and characteristics do they have? Uh, basically, how do we go about describing the Pandaren culture? Uh, one way we get inspired uh, begins with some brainstorming meetings. Our brainstorming meeting follows around 4 o'clock on a Friday. Okay, so while it may seem we're using a brainstorming meeting as an excuse to just drink uh, wine and eat really good cheese, um, truthfully, the dungeon team doesn't need any kind of excuse to drink and eat really good food. Um, we actually do talk and chat and throw ideas around and try to get the creative juices flowing. Uh, we also invite other teams along um, to join in the fun and uh, uh, we try to make it a collaborative effort, um, which is kind of important for us, and I think it's one of the values here at Blizzard, being collaborative. So we were lucky this time around to have Dave Kozak, our lead quest designer, um, help shed some light on uh, who the Pandaren are with his uh, story time hour, as he was called. This also fell around Dave Friday. Dave's right there. <laughs> He's right there. He's looking at you. for pointing that out. Um, this also fell around 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. So as being the dungeon team, we brought our wine and cheese. Um, uh, we recorded the meeting, and uh, just to give you a little bit of a caveat, uh, it is design ideas, so it is subject to change. Um, here he's talking about Lu Lang, who's kind of a central character, a central role uh, for the um, starting zone, which uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to play here, um, back there on the machines. Yes, yes, hopefully. If not, go do it, but wait until after this panel. <laughs> Click. Yes? It's going. Got up in the turtle turtle. Sweet turtle. 
waded out in the ocean, and he's floating in the ocean. He had with him a, a big bamboo umbrella. Takes a bamboo umbrella. Goes up, turns up on his shoulder, turns around, he looks at everybody. Goodbye. He sails off on the turtle, disappears in the crowd. Never heard from him. Never heard from him. <laughs> 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 Five years ago, the land comes back to everybody's amazement as the turtle appears over the horizon. The turtle's now bigger. There's a house. He's built a house on top of this turtle. He's got a little garden. He's got a little fence. He's got a little tiny, a little tiny shrine in the center of the turtle's back. But he <laughs> and the turtle, the turtle comes up on the beach. And he comes out of, the, out of his house. He's like, guys, you won't believe it. Up here on the desert, there's this big giant chasm, and there's like a thousand stone needles in there. And there's this crazy big old giant giant cow people. I'm all like, yo, what's up? And I'm like, move. <laughs> we can't get that staff out of his hand now. <laughs> there he is. <laughs>